Oh, hey. <laughs> awesome. We're here to talk about events, folks, and how we make them work on the indie web, especially for users. So, all of you here RSVP'd somehow to 2017.indieweb.org, right? Um, how many people actually managed to post an indie RSVP? Mine didn't go through. Yeah, oh. I didn't do one. Well, I, okay. I cheated because I tried a new syntax for remote RSVPs, and they are not parsed. <laughs> oh, right. The experimentation is good. Um, okay. So I wanted to compare the experience of RSVPing to this event to RSVPing on like other event systems or ticketing systems. Uh, we used Tito to get tickets, normal tickets, but there's also there was the indie web, indie RSVP stuff. Um, let's start with like what was annoying or awkward about that. I think it's it's good to start with the uh, uh, the problem. The indie version. Yeah. Yeah. Not posting an indie RSVP. Well, it's just like anything anything goes. Go for it, David. I marked up my RSVP incorrectly, and several other people. And several other people's. How did you back up other people's? I included it in a plugin which other people installed. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's fixed, uh, but I didn't realize it because I didn't try to in the RSVP at any event in the interim since I, from the time I released it to the time I tried to. I figured if I had made a mistake, somebody would have this before then, but apparently nobody tried the feature, so no one ate the doctor again. No talks. <laughs> And Lily, I know you have WordPress, but I don't think you were using the same plugin. Is that right, or were you? Um, was it Postkind? Yes. Um, I so I think I ended up not using Postkind. So you just pasted the HTML. In. I just pasted the HTML in, and then I ended up with like a double wrap of the div. Yeah, that was a that was a. If you took the HTML from the wiki and put it into WordPress, <laughs> that HTML had an H entry in it. Yeah. So then it became an H entry mm -hmm. inside of an H entry. Okay. And that broke the RSVP. So the obvious, the sort of like obvious answer for that is to include different HTML for WordPress. Mm -hmm. But the better answer for that is to not need HTML for WordPress. So which is what the post kind. Which is what the post yeah. kind. Okay. It was just uh, the RSVP property oh, was improperly. Oh, somebody's sharing their screen. Okay. So what's going yeah, on here? Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, well, that? this is Quill. So if I want to. Uh, or it should be, I just do this, and this should work now. And wait for it. Oh, it's now sending web mentions, but I, I'll, I have RCP now. So that's how easy. Can you show us the site? To Am see I the there? Page? Yeah, I'm there on the site. How much lag is there? There is lag in my. Oh, look, there's a little lag. You got it? That's cool. Yep. So that was the website. Okay. Cool. Under, so you share now. supports MicroPub. And understands the RCD posts. posts. And sends women. Yeah. And sends women. Yeah. Then it's pretty seamless. It's, it's a better experience than HTML. Yeah. Let's, let's put that in perspective. It's pretty, it's pretty bad, though, if you don't do any of those things. Yeah. So like, don't I. Do. I, for example, happen to not do any of those things. <laughs> so, like, that was, that was not great. Um, I don't do any of those things either. Well, so what I did is I have a I have a blog, and and I write my blog in Markdown, and you can put HTML in Markdown. And so I like, you know, just wrote like the the HTML myself, and then I, <coughs> excuse me, and then. Um, what did I do for the, oh, so I was originally looking on the wiki for, like, this is how you send a, a web mention with curl, mm -hmm. uh, which is not there, and I've been meaning to, like, figure oh. that out, because oh, I don't know curl. I don't feel like it used to be. Uh, yeah, well, oh. Maybe when when the spec came out, I know there were a bunch of those pages were sort of, we did research. I, yeah, I think I looked in web mention developer, too. I'm not sure. It may be that I just didn't, just didn't find it. Lost. Um, uh, sorry, go on. Web, web mentioned developers is very long, so I, I, I may have just not seen it. Um, 
Yes, I did that, but then I think eventually I, I looked um, I looked at the 2017, like the summit source, and looked at the web engine endpoint, and I was like, I wonder what that is, and it was like a PHP form that lets you like submit a manual web engine, and so I was yeah. like, oh great, uh, that's that's useful. Like uh, I don't really know why this is there, but like okay. Yeah. Or you found out why. You know, yeah. You found out it is for exactly that reason. Well, yeah, but but so it wasn't linked from anywhere. Yeah. This is the problem. Right. Okay. So I just attempted to describe that entire thing in the Etherpad, but I think we can all agree that that is more steps than was, anybody should have ideal. to go. Yeah. <laughs> it was not good. I, I would even argue this was, this was, I just wanted to show, this is what he ended up with. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, once you find this, which is the web engine endpoint, it has the share sure. monitor. But that's a developer you want. Yeah. Not a, yeah. Not, but no, so, I but, mean, but this was, uh, yeah. this is at least better than Curl, I would say. It's that's yeah. true. Yeah. So. But so but the, the Aaron, thing was, I, I was like, why is this here? Because it wasn't obviously like, I mean, it looks, it doesn't look good, and it wasn't linked from anywhere. Yeah. Like I, I found this by looking at the the um, rel link in the by source. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, by viewing source. Yeah. That's what happens when you use source and, and go to random URL to find. <laughs> you find that stuff. I have yeah. almost the same story. Like, okay. I did my, did my web RSVP. I found the wiki page and I put the stuff on there. But I, I found the, the there's a Go web engine command line tool. Yeah. And I used that. Mm -hmm. And I sent it in. And then I discovered I had the wrong year in the URL on my oh. URL. So and, then, and, then, and then I was like, okay, I fixed that. And I sent it again. And I was like, oh, now I'm RSVP twice. And then I was like, okay, I have to read the spec. And how do I delete the old RSVP? And it was, oh, your server has to return a certain error code. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. then I went, it was like, oh, shit, I'm using static hosting. I have no control over that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote a custom express server is, is it to return <laughs> that error code. Is it code. supposed to return gone? And then I resubmitted yes. yeah. it. Yeah, okay. And it didn't remove I feel like you did. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wrote a server to delete something. Yeah. Like that. It didn't work. <laughs> So that's the uh, I don't know how to describe that in the notes, so I'm just going to say. Um, the leading might be something that. He went above and beyond and it still didn't work. Above right? and beyond <laughs> still didn't so my work. Web engine, or my web RSVP worked, but from there twice. The leading yeah. didn't work. The leading yeah. didn't work, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the interface that I have now. So the what, RSVP just pulled down and that's the closest I was able to get to it. I mean, one of the problems that I have is that I don't have a sub page for RSVPs on my website, so I end up just making them hidden as like a hidden page. You don't want them to show up on your home. I mean, I don't particularly, well, nothing shows up, nothing from the blog shows up on my home page. Um, okay. My home page is static and then other parts of my website, but I don't but have, uh, but I do not have a RSVPs sub page or a category. Well, if you are using the plugin that I created, you do. Right. Well, and I, and I mean, I do for any, I like theoretically it does exist, but then it just goes into hidden. So I have to like go hunt down the URL and stuff. So it's, um, but do you do that via WordPress admin? You just go like go find the post or? Yeah. 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 I just go and find whatever the short URL, I, it auto automatically created, but it's, um, like, I guess kind of, one of the questions I have is like, do I want to have my RSVPs on my website? Right. Um, it's kind of that like private versus public kind of situation that sometimes anyone comes up with that mm -hmm. is, you know, I might not want to have it. So if you are RSVPing using your website isn't inherently public, you may not want it surfaced at the top, but it's, it's accessible. Right, right. But that, so that's, what, this is, I think, one of the big questions I have with events more broadly, like, sure, whatever, coming to AnyWeb, that's that's the thing that I'm happy, happy to be inherently, but, like, one of the problems I want to solve is getting events out of having to have them on Facebook, because Facebook is, at this point, a crap, over, yeah. over overwhelmed interface and really terrible for inviting people and checking down their emails and reminding them and everything, and because of that, I have plenty of Facebook events that I don't necessarily want to be public, and there's not necessarily good ways to do that on my own site. There's, no, there's no access. Do you have, yeah. 
And that, that, that was the very short explanation of that rambling thing. Do you have private posts on your website at all, like the ability to do that with WordPress? I mean, I can do it with WordPress. I'm not currently doing it with WordPress. So Are they I, just obscure, or are they behind some sort of... Um, I could put them behind right. a password yeah. that I could give to people. At that point, you would then have, to, have to give it to the event organizer to, right. for their server in order to be able to find it. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. So from just an RSVP standpoint, but also a hosting standpoint. So like, I hosted these brunch parties at my house that I really wanted to do indie RSVP on my website. That was exciting for me. Um, and that was one of the problems I was running into was like, People didn't necessarily want to have that RSVP come, come be public, and I didn't, I couldn't kind of articulate a good way to invite people to my own website to RSVP for stuff. That was a problem I was having. So this was also pre Tito being easy to use. So, so theoretically, RSVPs can already be private, right? A private web mention will make your RSVP private. It's it's a little more than that. But private web mentions aren't like largely adopted to begin with. So no, no, they're work. definitely not adopted. But um, it, it theoretic. That's why I said theoretically the private RSVP is kind of solved, I guess. No. Because well, it it's it not just. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, it's, but it's, if you, it's two levels. If you were to if you were to implement the the private web mention, you'd automatically you, for free you would also get private RSVPs. Right. Um, so the the real open standing problem there would be private events. The actual event markup that you want to share with people also needs to be privatized in some way. There's three problems. That's one of them. Private events. So being able to post a private event. Private RSVP. Which which then depends on um, just being able to post a private post at all. Then the second problem, which you alluded to, Lily, which is private invitations. And invitations are another post type yeah. where you basically send someone a homepage web mention. You say, hey, so-and-so, come to my event. And it's an invitation post. And then if their site supports invitations, then they should get a notification saying, you can invite to this event by so-and-so. Yeah. And then the third problem is private RSVPs. So to make private event RSVP, that whole thing work, you have to solve all three of those. And we don't even really have people that have made private like notes and replies working enough that they're using them. It's like yeah, super that also the, the, the current uh, private web mention is also from, from a private post and not to a private post. Yeah. 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 Uh, I want to go back to that UI. So could you put, put the cool UI on the screen again? Uh, I can. Do you have uh, good screen sharing? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I've got two two screens, so that's, uh, uh, that's cool. let's see. Get back to Quill. Do you see anything now? This is I'm controlling the video. Yeah, yeah we can see it. Yeah. Yes? OK. Yeah, there is this note. A little lag for us to see. Look. Okay. The actual UI. Because right now it just says on the home screen with continue. Okay, there we go. There, yeah, I see the same lag. That's nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, so here, how do you yeah. even pick RSVP? Uh, yeah, you, you first have to find the event. I'll do that now. Uh, which probably, then I take the link and do the yeah. reply button. Uh, waiting, I see that, and then I paste the link, and then Quill fetches the the other side and sees that it's an RS or an event, and then it adds a RSVP field. So basically, is there just yes and no? No, it's also maybe an interested. Okay. Uh, so okay, you can also leave it blank, right? Uh, then it's not an RSVP, it's just a reply. Yeah. 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 Then it's just yeah. So there's no separate UI for RSVP. It's part of the reply workflow. So the, the answer. And then there's a pop-up to yeah. pick the RSVP answer. Optional, put the optional comment mm -hmm. tags. 
slug and that's all the same indicate as, right yeah, yeah. Um, location uh, and then post uh, the reason I want to bring this up is you can even, even add, add like, a photo the, yeah, that's fun. even if this is the best like UI that we have right now compare this to what people can do on a Facebook event which is literally one button yeah. Well, I would yeah. say that that's, a, that's the same problem as likes. It's similar to likes because the problem is that you're on somebody else's post and you want one button to be able to respond. That might be a like or it might be an RCP. Okay, so and, on 27.rcp. on, on 2017.newit.com, okay. there's no big fat RCP button that you could click. Why not? And what would it take to make that work? Like, okay. I want the UI to be even simpler than Quill so, for anybody. So, so the answer is um, there's two parts. So we don't have a solid solution for one button interaction, mm -hmm. partly because it's actually a pretty big technical challenge because of things like security, uh, cross-site scripting things, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a handful of like attempts for this out in the world. Yeah. There's like web actions, indie actions. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can do a pop up. You can do uh, there's there's a handful of things, but uh, the only one that comes anywhere close to actually one button click is I think the indie action, indie config thing. Yeah. And yeah. that takes I still can't quite get my head around how that works. What what it takes it? so much setup. It so web and it also also only works in uh, Chrome. It also works. Doesn't work in Chrome. You know, it works in at least for me. It works in Chrome, but it didn't on Safari. But it should work in Firefox. Also. It should work in Firefox also. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're testing it in Firefox and Chrome. So basically, what we end up doing kind of hacky the, way they do it, right? I don't yeah, know. Let's not get into details, handler. but it's yeah. You register a custom protocol handler. I don't know. Actually, let's not go into details. Yeah. Oh, that point point is, can, that's, point. that's all I need to know. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's so, but the, the, the point the point is that it is a it's not I, I feel like it's a pretty hacky solution. It's not ideal. Um, but the end result is you get one click and it performs the action. Right. So this in a reader, this is not the case though. If I'm using Woodwind, now, exactly. In a reader, if I'm using Woodwind, Woodwind puts up single buttons for like repost. Mm -hmm. And the Reply, reason, and I believe it supports he, multiple ways. Yeah, RSVP. Yes, and the reason that works is because when you're using a reader, you've established a trust relationship with the reader. Yeah. You've granted it permission to post to your site, and you're on the reader's domain when you click the button, and that's why it's okay, and that's why it works. But if you're on somebody else's website, you have no relation trust relationship with them, so you can't have a button that is going to actually one click. I have a two click solution. It's the bookmarklet in yeah, my me too. Yeah. You know, which which like I can reply in Quill. That's how I did it. That's yeah. That's why I use it. But it's it yeah. seems like a, a great opportunity for a web extension. Which, yeah, because I use Quill. So the bookmarklet opens that URL and Quill has a reply, which no, I think he's, I think he's showing us here. Oh. So yeah. he has yeah, he has yeah, also. Uh, it is. Whoa. So if you click the heart, and then yeah. it's it's the like, and the other is a bookmark, and I can also uh, do the microphone is the microphone is sparse. But the, the 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 thing is that you can just select the select the thing, and then it likes. I use that for Twitter likes also. Mm -hmm. um, did you did you just do it? No, I didn't do it. So I do it. Uh, let me do it from here and see if I get better bandwidth into it. Yeah, it's okay. I will unshare my How screen. How did you find the event, Silly? How did I find the event where, to respond to? Yeah, like where did it come across like in your, like the URL or the page? Did you, did you see it? I think Aaron said you need to RSVP to Andy Webcam, and so I went to the wiki. Like in chat or in, or did this, this verbally tell you? Yeah, I think he told me. Okay. Like, because he said two feet away from me. So I might not be the best example of no, no, Discovery Engine. It's, it's an example. <laughs> so it's but I mean, I mean, that is often a use case for events for myself is that, like, I see people at Breakfast on the Bridges or at Bike Rides or something, and then I say, like, hey, you should go look up an RSVP to this. So I guess that's fair. Like, what if you said, go to 
anomaly.net yeah. slash, let's say you made like a short event, like, you know, bike ride. Yeah. Or something, which is to be direct to the actual one. Go to this link and RSVP. Yeah. Would that be like a sensible way for you as an event publisher to share with people? Um, I think anything that has a permalink, and yes, theoretically, yes, short URs are helpful if I'm doing them in a person, but anytime I have a permalink, it's an effective way for me to advertise. And I think one of the frustrating things about Facebook events is while they do have permalinks, the permalinks they're are, ugly. they're super ugly. And, um, advantage for us. They, well, yeah, it's yeah. totally an advantage. And then one of the other problems is that um, Facebook events usually embed poorly in other silos. They have poor previews. So um, I think one of the really great advantages is uh, if you're using Snap and other things like that, um, you can really control, especially in WordPress, you can control what the excerpt looks like and everything. And so you, you have more ability to control what the perma, how the permalink appears in, in other silos or theoretically on other people's websites. So this is, this is really what I'm interested in is the, is the how win. user flow UX. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. how to win, but the user flow UX from the, I'm a human talking to another human. Yeah. I have an event to invite you to starting from that all the way up through that person eventually successfully RSVP. So I, here's an example of an event that I've been telling, I have had to advertise Can I ask for. Someone to note this, by the way? Uh, right. Advertise for in a bunch of different Put ways. Keep stuff. <laughs> don't, don't, don't make me get the pocket uh, One, so I'm running an event that you can see on, if anybody wants to look it up, it's 3030.anomalily.net. And so I'm running a huge event that I have a flat static web page for, and that's because it has way more FAQs than I can fit in, in Facebook, right. right? Because it's like complicated. It's a citywide transportation scavenger hunt. And um, I also really want to control the look and feel of it, similar to like a conference website or something where you want to have more of a design element in it. And um, a ton of the ways that I advertised for it were physical mail, so I needed a URL that didn't look like crap in a postcard. Uh, I needed to be able to send emails and have a link that was going to continue to work for people and that wasn't going to have such a terrible user experience like, oh, if you're not logged into Facebook, you can't RSVP to this or like, oh, you need to put a credit card in, like, which was, which was a problem in finding a, a event engine for me. Um, and I see people in person and I say, hey, I'm having a birthday party. Yes, it's very complicated. I need you to RSVP to it. Um, go to 30.anomalilla.net. Um, but I also didn't, you'll notice if you go to my own personal website, you do not see it linked from there. It is a subdomain. It's easily discoverable and telling people about, but I do not, I don't want it to show up mm -hmm. because I don't want randos to come on my like large event that I'm doing. Um, and the other reason that I ended up making a standalone website and I'm using Tito as the actual database and management engine for those um, was because I needed to collect collect RSVPs that were linked to real um, email real email addresses so that I could control that. Um, but I uh, similarly wanted um, I what was the other yeah I lost my current thought. Uh, oh, Tito because. oh, Tito, yeah, because I was actually able to, in, in, a, in an HTML, a rich HTML email, I'm able to have a one-click button where people can actually have a pop-up RSVP. Um, and so the user experience of RSVPing, I think, with Tito is really good, and it works in both WordPress and flat HTML. So this, this is actually just a flat HTML website. Um, the, Really awesome event <laughs> they, I, I do owe a lot of debt to Donut.js's designer because I they let me take a bunch of their source code. It's very good. Yeah. And there's like a crazy. I'm just going to be impressed that your celebration is having is yeah, anybody you're friendly with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very complicated. Put the URL in. Yeah, I can put it in the slide. Um, I'm just saying, or just an edit pad. I don't think I would do that much effort. So, but then the other thing is that I wanted a discovery engine that would um, force people. So, one thing that I think is really important in event listings is um, all of the relevant links to get things on Google Calendar and iCal and stuff like that mm -hmm. after you register. Yeah. Huge, huge user experience thing from the from the RSVP side. 
Um, and pretty much if it's not on my Google Calendar, it's, it's not real, yeah. right? <laughs> and, um, and, and Tito does that. I would like to see that with more uh, indie RSVPs. I think that would be really great. Um, I think it would be really interesting if I could have indie, indie RSVPs on 30.anomaly.net mm -hmm. along with Tito. Like I, cause, but the main thing is that I need to make sure that I can get email collection, right? There's a lot of logistics. And so if I'm doing indie RSVPs, sending someone a web mention and being like, hey, your team assignment is blah, 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 is like not appropriate. Um, like that's not going to work. So I need to make sure that there's an email collection method. Um, I also will note, I did end up months after releasing this, putting together a Facebook event and I realized that the, and I, the Facebook event has the link to the outside RSVP. I'm like, if you RSVP to this, this is not a real RSVP, but I had to do that because people weren't mentally marking the event in their head because unless there's a Facebook event, it's not real to them. Um, and I have noticed that with a lot more event organizers, very few event organizers are solely relying on Facebook as an event mechanism anymore. Even people I know that plan parties, like we've gone back to text message threads to let people know that you're having a house party and you might do a Facebook event, but you're also doing other promotion methods because it's too overwhelming. Um, but it is still expected that there will be a Facebook event. And so I think, I, I think we might be on the way out of that, but it's something that we should consider when we're looking at creating user experience on events is that at the very least having a way to have a syndication URL of this is the permalink to Facebook. The nice thing that Tito does is that I'm able to dump in the permalink for the Facebook event and it'll um, show me who's RSVP'd on either one. So uh, Tito's back end will let me look at my Facebook RSVPs that aren't linked to actual RSVPs and I can go bug them. So, and say like, hey, you just because you click yes, it's, it's not, this isn't real. So. Um, so, so, remember, does Bridget pull back RSVPs? Yes. Okay. Like we had people RSVP for the Facebook event for this event that didn't show up. Or that never, bothered, never got around to RSVP on Tito. And Bridgie was sending RSVP web mentions to them, so they were showing up in any RSVP list until I blacklisted Bridgie. <laughs> right. So I hear a couple of concrete things that we could build so, so far. That's exactly the kind of dialogue. By the way, that's the level of discussion I wanted to have is the, I want to do an event and actually like control all the bits, but from my own site, and here are the actual real world challenges I'm running into as an event organizer. Like I'm, that is, that is, I'm, I'm like a hundred X more interested in that than like which plumbing we use for what, or, pl or any problems with plumbing, right? Because that can all be discussed in dev under the under the covers later. So, so I will say, Homebrew Website Club. Like, I feel like what I ended up doing for my scavenger hunt is very close to what Homebrew Website Clubs need. But the other component is that you need to be able to network chain. So I want so say that there were other transportation scavenger hunts. I would like to be able to see. In, in easily what they are. So homebrew you websites. Say, you mean, right, if you go look at an event, it would say you might also be. Yeah, you might also be interested in other things related to either the open web or other homebrew website clubs, right. maybe or, in other or cities. Other things in Portland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that is a really powerful feature of Eventbrite. I think Eventbrite's kind of miserable to make people RSVP through for like a free after work two hour event. Um, I think of Eventbrite for more like a conference or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, it was two times only for paid events. Is that what did they No, it's free. free it's free for free events. So what we actually, so I run lots of companies. That's how I reason I touch it. Um, and we we built our own system ten years ago, which we still use, and we're currently overhauling dramatically. And um, so we're really thinking more about that from a user experience perspective. Now they're quite. I mean, they rent for up to sort of six, seven hundred people at mm -hmm. times. So you need a um, real database. Yeah, so <laughs> in our case, we have like, you know, we integrate with our CRM. We're, we're thinking about yeah. it like, I could bore you for hours with lots of thoughts around this. But, um, you know, we, we've sort of thought a lot about, you know, analyze what an Android does versus Tito does and, and then Facebook as, as well. But, um, look, I, I think one of the, the clear things is, is, is you, you know, if you want to capture people's intent then and there. If they want, you know, how do you, at the very, and see, sometimes what happens is, let's say I charge you some money, for something, right? As long as you come along and you express your intent by, Agreeing, I don't care if you pay right now because I've kind of got you on the hook, and it's very rare for someone to do that and not then ultimately sign a deal. So, the work, I mean, again, like there's workflows that are just, yeah, I'd love to go all the way through to, okay, love to go, you pay for the money, or I'm actually going to book for several people. Now, again, I'm not saying that's necessarily 
the thing, but that's something that's not uncommon at a kind of commercial level. The, the person who is registering, you know, for a team of five or ten people, they may even then register actually to the, to the people who they don't even know yet. All they know is they want to take advantage of some offer. So we'll book ten tickets mm -hmm. and we'll allocate them later. Now these might really be corner cases and stuff, but but like this, I guess I'm trying to kind of scope out at this quite significant commercial level. And whether or not there's opportunity, whether or, or you know, is that just too much of an edge corner case that we don't worry about? No, people book movie tickets like that. Already. Well, that, that's very true. Like you, so, you buy ten movie tickets online, you don't have to tell them who's going. Yeah. Well, you never just tell them who's going necessarily at all. Right. right. You just have a single email address for that person. In our case, we will ultimately know everyone who attended because when they turn up, we have to give them a badge and yeah. to make sure that you know, like the deal is, there's one person, one ticket. Um, but they, so we had some people prototype some stuff around um, uh, user experience stuff around booking theater tickets uh, and mobile experience recently, which was really interesting because there's you know the, around deferred payments and 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 all, all, all even stuff like that. So I mean the question is sort of is beyond yeah I'd love to go to your party or I'd love to go to your party and I'll pay the ten bucks to cover the costs. So you know that sort of level. What happens when there's a whole lot of other complex decisions people have got to make about the level of ticketing or are they going to add that, uh, you know? Do they need a vegetarian meal? Do they need yeah, childcare? Mobility or yeah. the challenge around that mobility, you know, and, and you know, how much does say just simply this component is, you know, RSVP, and then we worry about the, like to, to my mind, the hardest part is you really want just the simplest things. People say yes, right? And then worry about all the details later. Oh, we've got the yes, we've got, you, we've got some access to you. We can just bug you later for your money or to see if you really want to come. Right? Yeah. So if, even that alone is really valuable. Even if we have to take care of all the other details, yeah. it's not covered in this in any way. Just that simple, well, how, how quickly can get an intention to go, that I think from even from the big commercial end of town, there'd be a lot of interest in that. Um, and only that's why we tweet out the first thing is, hey, so what's your email address? Yeah. Because once they've got that and they go away, they don't do anything else, I can come back and event so leave, they can come back. Yeah. And event point does like both of them sort of start with future email address, right? I, I also would say that I think one of the useful things about Tito as an engine is that it um, allows for more granularity of what you absolutely need to require. I mean like any good web form, but like yes, I need an email, but like for my transportation scavenger hunt, I also need your Twitter handle. And I, right. I like literally the event does not work if you don't have a Twitter right. handle. So they allow you to add custom Cus custom fields and also like, you know, grad gradiated requirements. Like if you're doing a conference or you're feeding people, you need to know what their dietary needs are. Um, so I, I think that's interesting. And this is one of the reasons why I don't think all of this is going to be solved by open web standards. Um, because I think that tools, uh, one can, Tito is a great example of like, you know, building ticketing software is pretty profitable if you build a good one, right? So, um, so I think a lot of this can be solved by really good private sector innovations. The question is, do, how do we make indie RSVPs or make open web standards attractive enough for private enterprises that are building ticketing software to want to include it as an option? Well, eventually. So let's start with ourselves. I mean, maybe, maybe, but I'm saying like, if we are building with an eye to, yeah, we're never going to solve all the problems ourselves. What is the killer app in in building things in RSVP standards that we can uniquely do, right? So like, what can, what is one of those things is replying from your own website, right? <laughs> like, like that, I mean, that's the the first. But like, what problem are we solving within the space that doesn't exist right now? And, I mean, one of those is that right now when people RSVP, if they RSVP with only their email, you don't know necessarily anything about them, right? right. They, they respond with an AOL address, and all I know is that they had the internet in the 90s. Like, <laughs> There's this pretty <laughs> awesome, terrifying thing called Peabit. Have you folks heard of it? Again, have a look. Like, it does, they have a huge database. So you give them an email address, they'll tell you the stuff about people, including rando at gmail.com. Right. Okay. So, but anyway, but it, one, I want to know a lot more about right. that as a yeah, fundraiser. It's fine. But it's <laughs> yeah. And that, to be quite might be a use case where people may can go, I don't actually want to give you an email address. Yeah. I, but or, it, you know, I don't know, is this making my whisper from kind of. Can you know, I throw up a, you know, a burner. Burner you, a domain, burner, which is. Cool. Yeah. Burner domain is literally only something that applies to the anyone community, but. <laughs> Does anybody have one? I have lots. 
No, I meant one that you would use just for the purpose of giving to people you didn't. Don't like? Well, I was going to say don't like. You don't want to have your primary domain. I don't think um, I, have, I have email domain, top level domains. Oh, email domain. That. Yeah. But I'm saying but, just domains with a website just for the purpose of anonymity. I don't think that I, anything well, I, I do is you terribly you anonymous. So. A comment grade for, for uh, attending, for creating posts that you can, and what I might mention, uh, where you can just log into it. Basically, it's like anonymous commenting for any web comment. Oh, that's adorable. Well, yeah. uh, I don't know. You, you could use that to reply to ours and Pete. You could. Um, <laughs> one thing it would make, one thing it would make, like, um, <laughs> so I think we've, we've been discussing, like, uh, there are all these issues of, like, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm about to say, so it's, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, Oh, there's the, there's the URL for the, uh, um, oh, um, I think there's a lot you can do with RSVPs, and it, the, the use cases are, are anywhere from, like, a simple meetup where it doesn't matter the count of people or there's no food involved, or you don't even need their email address. You just kind of want to know, hey, who's coming, to all the stuff that, like, all the privacy concerns that were right, brought up or the... Yeah. And all the additional follow. information, too. Yeah, there's... It, it sounds like there is like a, a desire for an event organizer to be able to ask a bunch of questions along with an RSVP. But to your point, mm -hmm. sir, but to your point, maybe you do want some way to do it incrementally, so yeah. that you want to let people just RSVP, yes, but then maybe add information later. Would you? That we actually allow people to do that already now. Without actually, our, our point, what we do, you have to use all the information. You don't have to pay us yet. But that in the next iteration, which we're working on, it's pretty much, hey, so. Just let's start, get your email address. And then what we do is we use Clearbit to pre-populate the thing. Or if we don't know them already, we'll say, hey, are you Aaron? And they're like, it looks like you're Aaron in Portland. Is that you? Yes, no, right? But, so, but that incremental approach um, is definitely, you know, from a commercial perspective, expecting the least as possible and yet kind of moving them along the workflow uh, is, is really valuable. I was thinking of a slightly different thing too, so, so meetup, right? So, right, so, so the challenge with meetup is, Right? You don't own your community, as you probably well know, right? You have no, the only mechanism you have to access that community is, their UI. Is, is, is you can message them through their UI. You don't get their email addresses. You don't have any relation with them. And if you don't continue to pay the money to meet up every month, they can take that and give it to someone else. This makes me wonder why anyone bothers to... So the reason why people bother is because let's suppose I want to start a meetup on the client email or something, right? If I put it in meetup.com, one thing they do do is help you build communities very quickly because it will be surface to people. And so people will kind of trade off and this down quick. Right. So well, wait a minute. Network network effect. Effect. Yeah, it does. They've really taken advantage of that world. But I think there's a huge opportunity to, to, to kind of upend them. As usually with um, upcoming kind of when it got rebooted, I thought anyone had ideas along those lines. But it's, it doesn't seem to feel. Does anyone use upcoming now? You know, yeah, like, yeah, the new one. Like, but, but I thought maybe it was going to be like, screw you, meet up, let's kind of like approach this in a nice way. But they seem to be totally different thing, which is fine, right? But I'm just wondering whether the, around meetup is there an opportunity for the on to own their own community, I guess, because like, that's what happens with meetup. People people don't realize until they suddenly like, they build up 1,500 people, 1,000, 2,000 people who have literally only you can only use meetup to get to them, and probably 10 percent if you're lucky, even 5 percent will turn up to any given meetup. Yeah. So you can't even, you know, like, unless you've been smart enough to think, oh, well, let's convert them to an email address the first time they come, and, and now we have that, that back meetup. channel to connect them. Meetup is, is it's, it's like it's a target, right? Anyway, so whether or not it's an opportunity here to allow, because, you know, meetup tends to be more toward an audience of organizers and even attendees, well, not entirely, but, but not, you know, not unentirely, who may well be early adopters of this sort of approach, especially if you can make it slightly more user point. I think the meetup example is interesting because so meetup does a very good job of encouraging attendees to click join on as many things as they can. Absolutely. And then they charge organizers per member. Effectively, yes. Which is, uh, and then they, they go and encourage people to just click join everywhere. Yes. So it, they're very much like working to just maximize their profit, not really in the best interest of everybody. And that's why such a low turnout rate is because your members aren't actually they don't engage committed in members. Um, and I think that. Uh, the idea of a community owning their community 
is uh, and if a you good would, framing of If you were to do that now, because I, I help a lot, we, we, we bootstrap a lot of community to get people you know, who do stuff and say, well, I'll happy to help you, we can, we can help drive it and give you some thoughts around how to do this. And we would kind of almost recommend they use event, well, certainly they use Eventbrite over, over um, because you're free, you, get out, you, you can rent, but you also get your email addresses. So you, but you, know, you don't really get the network effects the Meetup has, and you don't get, um, well, you certainly don't get that. And you, know, you don't get the, um, um, you know, the, me the messaging. You, know, you sort of have to do all the, make all the running with it, right? right? And it's an event by event. It's not a community-based approach. It's an event-based approach. Right? So, but, so I'm, I'm clarifying a question. Uh, something that's brought up, been brought up a number of times is um, uh, getting email addresses. It doesn't matter if he doesn't. No. He's going to get stuck. I'm going to have it. Uh, I kind of want to watch, see what happens. OK. Wait, where did he get uh, Someone broke outside and Ben just ran to go get him, but I don't think Ben realizes he won't be able to get back in. <laughs> is, is the guy not down there anymore? That's right. He left it's free. That's OK. We'll see if Ben were brought his device up and people listen to the channel and realize he got himself in the same situation. <laughs> Maybe we'll just continue to have people pile up outside. We're going to treat this. Teach, we're going to treat this as a as a teachable moment. <laughs> ben, I'm, ben says I'm going to treat this kid. <laughs> so. <I, laughs> um, different class of events. I think your your example, uh, with the thirty dot, is um is like awesome and explores a bunch of the needs that like. It's, it would be good to get there, mm -hmm. but like, what what things can we do to just make even simple events possible? Like the yay nay or SVGs. Or and yay nay interested. Um, which I feel like is a pretty common use case. One problem is there's no canonical like if you don't have outbound web mentions already implemented, there's no canonical place that you can go to like send a web mention. Like what I want is something something like what's on. Uh, that sketchy like developer looking thing on the summit site or like on uh, like Have your you site where you can manually okay. input a URL telegraph? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, you mean like paste your RSVP URL here? Yeah. Yeah, and, and then it will like that's, send that's a on a lot of pages. But yeah, that's that's on a lot of pages. Like, the problem is the problem is like. I think uh, good enough. I mean, it's about no, as I'm easy not, as putting a post up on there. I'm just saying page. it's better. Like okay. Like, it's that's, that's, that it's strikes yeah. me as something that's easy to do. I, I, yeah, yeah trap the elevator, please. The elevator? <laughs> yeah, do you need <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just is that is uh, that uh, is that bathroom test get you out of the elevator? No. So if you push the elevator, push up, you push up and come up. Yeah, it'll come up. You just gotta know the elevator, right? So, <laughs> you're just gonna keep going until the elevator comes up, right? We're, we're gonna see how many. Yeah, there's almost like eight elevators. You guys, this is some sort of public I'm just elevator. enjoying this too much as the problem. Yeah, you yeah. are. Um, um, no, so but I think that's a good point. I think that so um, the requirement to be hosted at a really good me in, uh, as long as it's common. Let's they capture what Lily just said. Right. I need other people taking notes in the um, yeah. Let's yeah. back up, back up a couple. So, uh, AJ said, reverse pop, pop, pop the stack. So what you said was um, the main challenge you had was actually sending the web mention. Sure. Because I, you, I just you, yeah I just happen to got, not have implemented anything. Sure, sure. That, but, yeah. but but like you you got to the point of making posts on on making a URL on your site. Right. And yeah. then you got stuck. And yeah. And so. having a having more tools to help send web mentions yeah. would have smoothed that part out. Sure. So that's an incremental. Yeah. Thing is that yeah. that we could do. Um, so something like that. And uh, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just like yeah. literally like a single script. Yeah. Um, so like would like a field on an indie event where I can paste RSVP? Yeah. Or uh, like even even better is if um that would be that would be good, but another decent solution would be if I could just go to like the web engine page and have it be like don't support web engines yet, like go here. This will always this so will web mention page. What is it? Uh, sorry, the wiki page. That's what I meant to say. Oh look, something worked. Oh good. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's the wiki page? <laughs> Did Mark? Did we get everybody to like it? But no. on the on the the Indie Web is, Summit page there wasn't a web mention form built into the page. Correct. Um, have right. you seen that the have you seen like on my site which is uh, which has Yeah, that's phenomenal. Have you written a response 
That's, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's a pattern a lot of people have been adopting now. Sure. Um, yeah. That should go yeah. on the event page. That should go on, yeah, so that should go on the event page. Yeah. You would allow people to Can you just it. capture that because I didn't quite yeah. follow. So I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this on the screen so you can see. Um, that, would be, that would be the ideal, yeah. Oh my god, what is going on? That is that is a lot of... What? Video Several screen. people within the events already have the form inputs. I think Seb yeah. has it. I think so, Gina yeah. has it. Yes. Uh, Gina has done in the events for Homebrew Website Club, which has the form that you can put your URL in. So if this was a event, yeah, then, that would be great. Then this That's is what he's asking for, basically, yeah. which is like, and then what would you put in the URL for your RCP. RCP. even though it doesn't exist? If you, if, once if, you if, make it, yeah, once you make it. So, so it is right, a right, 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 right. Make your make your post, make your RCP, but, and then you would but, put it. But you don't have to worry as much about web engines. Yeah, it's, so. it's one less step, it's, and that's, yeah. that's kind of a good thing. Like each improvement we can make to reduce a step makes it easier for a few more people. So to one one other thing. This but, might oh no go ahead. So so the, the other the other part of this is that if if like not everyone has this form right so if there is like you know like send a web engine dot com or something like that and you could go there and there is mm. just like this form there that would be great too that that where is, are you that's it so the grass, uh, okay excellent that's great i didn't so know that someone existed. should i i don't have a laptop in front of me that, that's yeah that's the problem so is, Aaron, that should, should be at the very top of the web engine and just redirect it there that's you just said it, and it's recorded, and if you don't register, someone else will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the, problem, the problem with this is that I didn't know that that existed. That should just be at the top yeah. of the web mentioned wiki page, and that will, like, solve it. So <laughs> something I also want to know is I want to be able to, how do I the check? Itself, how do I check that a web engine is wiki? Clarification. Top of page, or you mean like a form embedded, or just no? Link? Just just, just a link. Yeah. Like, like here, yeah. here's the thing you can yeah. use. Yeah, here is the thing you can use. Here's how you solve this problem quickly instead of reading this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because bring this back. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But Telegraph needs a login, right? Uh, yeah. In the auth login, yeah. Yeah. So then you have to have in the auth before you can start sending web. Messages. Oh yeah. Mm. The whole assume <laughs> for some people. So, so if you have I business. could possibly make it work without a login. Because the are we trying to avoid spam or what? Uh, no, it it does. It's its main purpose is not just that form. Its main purpose okay. is like an API where you where it also keeps track of everything you sent and you can go right. interview your logs and all that kind of stuff. Which it's like telegram. Like if I just PC, telegraph, okay. telegram telegraph okay. If I just remove all that and I could, I, I think it'd be fine to make an anonymous form. For it. Like I would I would happily add that to telegram. But telegraph also has I think one of the few cases of like keeping track of web mentions that have been sent and, and having like what was the response and tracking response URLs. So if I log into Telegraph right now, will it show me web mentions that I've sent if I use only, any author? Only if you send through it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So so this is the this is the question that I had. So like I just sent a web mention. It wasn't an RSVP, but I just sent a web mention to someone and it's not showing up on their page. Right. And I'm like like how much more energy am I going to put into making sure that this response actually got seen by them? Yeah. And then I'm like, maybe I should just tweet it at them, which is not, this is not how I want to solve this problem. So what What is the solution you want? I would like to, I would like a, I, something. Something like this. Okay. So this yeah. is what I've done with Telegraph for exactly this reason, because I have the same problem of like, once I send it, I want to see, yeah. I want to see what, what's happened with it. So my post UI tells me for each web mention it sends yeah. whatever succeeds. This is out. basically the equivalent for me because I don't have much. I'm sorry, you don't have that yet. Um, <laughs> <Okay. sure request. laughs> I mean, I, you know, yeah. Uh, well, no. actually, uh, pull request. The, <laughs> yeah, the purpose of any web summit is to make you feel guilty about not doing <laughs> enough work on WordPress stuff. Obviously, it is. Well, I'm, I'm going to put in the book so that somebody could write a lot. <laughs> Ah, yeah, that's what I put in the pull request to change it. You couldn't log because there's no way to log. Now you can log, but nobody wrote a logger. Mm. So it, okay. it is right for someone to do. If it's right for I, made, I made it so someone else can do this. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually really helpful. Um, yeah. Martin was trying to say something earlier about some people have forms on their event pages. Martin, are you still there? I, I'm here. I think Seb has it. Um, oh, Seb, yeah, do you I have, have Seblog I have the same events? Yeah, exists. Can you show us an event permalink? I, I only so, have one event, but you can see it if you go to setlog slash events. I think it's quicker if you do it than if I share my screen. Yeah. 
Who's driving? Uh, and yeah, it's, it's oh, it's lagging. There it is. Oh, so uh, this is his event. <gasps> okay, that is awesome. Have... Can you paste that in the in the? Um... Uh, three people have RSVPs, uh, oh. and then at, least, okay. at the bottom, there's the uh, the form for sending what I mentioned down here. Yeah, that's good. Huh. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 that, is yeah. App, that is exactly what I'm yep. talking about. Yeah. So this is a pattern we should capture and mm -hmm. like I screenshot and put it on the problem. wiki. Um, but not for our not for RCP. But for RCP and events, it's like special super and like it's required. especially super useful. Yeah. So, so can you screenshot that as like mm -hmm. an RSVP UI, I guess, and add it to the RSVP page? That would be cool. And um, it's, it's a RSVP. recurring it's a recurring thing because Gmail yeah. has it as well yeah. on his event pages. I'm, Yes, gmail.net slash events oh. slash 25, for example. Well, I don't think Aaron has it on his events. I don't have it on my events. Yeah. So this oh, might be the first. I just have it on every page that is a, uh, that is a, a entry, and, and I just thought, uh, yeah, I just made this a, a different kind of entry, but, but yeah, it just repeats the pattern every, every page. Right, because you have it everywhere. But you have different text, right? No, yeah, I, I do have a, a, a different, um, which you can actually, I believe you, I don't, haven't tested, but I think you can RSVP to, to a like or any other page and it will show up the same way. I believe that's possible. <laughs> you, you can try. Everyone RSVP so it's not really, it's, yeah. Including it will like, just show up yeah. as a different I face file above or below the likes. Uh, uh, I have one face file for likes and reposts and all those <laughs> things, and one for RSVPs and all the flavors. Uh, but I can screenshot it. Right back when we get a laptop. Um, we're almost out of time. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if this is helpful, but I, I have an example of a 2014 bad indie web version of an event page that I made where I wanted to have, I did um, peso, no, I did Posse to Facebook and web mentions brought back in all of the invites and it, the comment section looks like a shit show because of it. Oh boy. Um, because it's literally just a bunch of, this oh, person invite. is invited via Facebook.com. This yeah, person yeah, is yeah. invited via Facebook.com. She sends all those, like, as is invited things. And it theoretically sounds great, as, right? But it's like a mess. how do you present it? So can that's you, a whole good question. Can you use CSS depending on the markup? I guess the markup can always change as well. But I just wonder you could style to hide bits of it depending how it's marked up. But as, yeah, the way I do that is, uh, like, I post events, I posse them to Facebook, and then I I hide all those invited women. You just hide them. I, just, I just don't display them. Well, can I flag something, just I think it was illustrated quite well there. If you, you've got somebody, like, a, people don't necessarily want to publicly know that there are RSVP on the, so here, mm -hmm. screen, quick screen sharing, I'm sorry, no. So, like, you know, we've got Tazik said no. That bastard set up. Right. <laughs> like we're sort of being very public about people's intent here, about whether they're going to come or not. You know, just that's that, not true with public Facebook events. So I, I, you're right about private events, but people are doing that. Well, so, for example, on Eventbrite, though, you can choose whether or not you want to show your friends on Facebook whether you agree to is RSV or not. So there's a status of, I am going, I've registered, but I don't want to show people I'm going. Right. That, that's, a, that's a very common status on Eventbrite. Right. So right, but people use Facebook and they don't care. So the same you can't say no on Facebook well, anymore. I would, I would argue that there is an important case there that people will agree to, yeah, that they want to go to something, but they don't necessarily want to be public about the fact that they're going to that, right? I'd um, say if you can even just solve the so, 90% case of people don't care, I'll start right. with that. As an so event organizer, I, I, like, would, I, I don't show notes. If people are to be no, like I'm just like that looks bad for my event, so I don't put that on my page. Sure, I get that. Yeah. Pete. But I'm, I mean, I, I would argue, you know, I think it came up earlier with somebody, something, somebody said that, that I think, I think there, there is, you know, there's a case between fully public and fully private in terms of yes, I want to go to private, public, private, 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 private events, here, yeah, public events, exactly right, and that's and yeah, there are people who are, you know, we can explore why, but 
this is not uncommon. Like, as I said, in event, Eventbrite, you have to opt in to showing that you're publicly going. Okay. Okay. So their default is you are opt, you, you're not publicly So wrapping up, let's do like one minute wrap up. We're already over our wrap up time, but let's do it. Uh, I will, my wrap up statement is I want to make progress on posting indie events tomorrow. And so if anyone else wants to work on that or RSVPs or anything, including forms to send web mentions of RSVPs, um, I'm interested in that. I'm, interested, and I'm totally interested in like doing UI mock-up too. So code plus UI mock-up. Um, I'd like to send on your UI mock-up because I have a UI now. I think it could be better. Okay, including the like, do I show no's or not? Do I show limitations or not? I think those are great questions. One thing that if anyone has the um, uh, RSP live page open, uh, one really great thing to check after would be um, something that you said about like make it really easy to add to a calendar. Mm -hmm. Like if oh, you yeah. could just provide a way to like take the micro like take the event page micro formats and like convert it into like yeah. iCal or, or whatever. That, yeah. that exists, but it needs work. Because I, I use h2vx.com. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, any other wrap up statements before we um, finish the recording? I appreciate all the work you guys are doing. And I will utilize it when it's done. When it works. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. I might even utilize it when it doesn't work. <laughs> I just filed two more issues, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Martin. 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 We're going to start the recording in the next three cool. weeks doing nothing. All right, everybody. Writing indie web code and. Thanks for joining us. So are you going on an indie web retreat? Uh, no, my employer is sending me to Manila to work, and I know nobody in Manila, and I will be working from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m., so I don't ah. perceive myself necessarily. Well, I, can, I can hook you up with some bread people in it. A whole development. Yeah, please, make sure you remind me, David, and I will. They, they run this fantastic conference. You have to do work, don't uh, they?